My name is William Chang. I'm an assistant professor at the Yale School of Medicine section of nephrology, and I'm also a staff nephrologist at the VA Connecticut Healthcare System. I'm happy to talk about our project today uh, for the KidneyX initiative uh, entitled Engineering Bioartificial Kidneys, Combining Kidney Organoids and Peritonodialysis. I'd like to just take a moment to say how much I've been inspired by the experience working with the Kidney X Initiative, meeting uh, patients, uh, patient advocates, research advocates, and the researchers themselves. So I'm excited to talk about our project. So I would like to start with a uh, sort of fundamental uh, description of the, the challenge of kidney disease. Um, and I think it's necessary to, to start with a, just a baseline understanding of uh, what it is exactly that the kidneys do. When I see patients in clinic, I often describe the kidneys as being a very sophisticated filtration system. Uh, so the heart pumps blood throughout the body, and a lot of that blood goes to the kidneys. Um, over 100 liters of uh, blood are uh, seen by the kidneys every day, and this is necessary for maintaining uh, the amount of fluid in our body or the volume, uh, also electrolyte balance and acid-base balance. So, for example, if somebody were to drink an excess amount of water, uh, the water is absorbed by the GI tract and it makes its way into the blood and the kidney is able to see it. And using the cellular sensing mechanisms within the kidney, the kidney is able to tell that there's too much water and it simply makes more urine that is more dilute with more water in it uh, to maintain the balance. The same is true for electrolytes, uh, sodium, potassium, uh, calcium, phosphorus, um, and, as well as acids and bases. In addition, the kidney is critical for detoxification. Uh, so, for example, when we eat protein, sometimes that protein can be uh, turned into ammonia, and the kidney is essential for removing ammonia from the body by putting it into the urine. Uh, there are probably thousands of uh, the toxins that are built up in the body that the kidney is necessary uh, for to remove from the body to keep us healthy. Uh, so a lot of this is to, to make the point that the kidney is doing a lot, and it's a very complicated and sophisticated system uh, that um, we are still learning quite a lot about. When the kidneys shut down, this is a major medical problem, and nearly uh, 800,000 patients in the United States and millions of patients worldwide have end-stage renal disease, or ESRD. And there are millions more who have what's called chronic kidney disease, or CKD. The cost of the care of patients with ESRD and CKD is tremendous. For ESRD, Medicare costs alone exceed $50 billion per year in the United States. So what are the current treatments for ESRD? And the main ones are transplantation, hemodialysis, and peritonodialysis. And I'd like to just take a few moments to talk about these. The current standard is uh, very suboptimal. Um, a lot of patients might benefit from a kidney transplantation. That's uh, simply replacement of the kidneys with a, a donor organ. But there are significant problems with transplantation, uh, the main one being that there simply aren't enough. Uh, kidneys available for donation. Uh, and the second major problem is that um, when patients are transplanted, uh, they need to be put on immunosuppression. And immunosuppression has its own side effects, such as making patients more prone for infection, uh, cancer, and there are many other side effects, such as effects on bones or development of diabetes. Uh, but transplantation does incorporate uh, uh, kidney tissue, uh, which uh, makes it a far better option than the other two, which are hemodialysis and peritonodialysis. Uh, hemodialysis is um, done by uh, running the patient's blood uh, through a machine uh, that essentially cleans the blood and then returns the clean blood back to the patient. Unfortunately, hemodialysis requires patients to go to a dialysis center typically three times a week uh, for sessions that last three or four hours. Um, and patients typically are uh, pretty fatigued after their dialysis sessions. Um, and this uh, can significantly impact the patient's quality of life. Uh, the 
other option is something called peritinodialysis. And in this form of dialysis, uh, the patients can um, put fluid into their abdomen and the cells within the uh, abdomen, the, more specifically, the, the blood vessels in the abdomen are able to uh, ex exchange with the fluid that's placed uh, within the abdomen and then drained out. Um, uh, the, the drained fluid is the, uh, the one containing the, the toxic materials. Uh, this form of dialysis can be done at home, um, but both forms of dialysis, hemodialysis and peritonodialysis, uh, have uh, significant effects on quality of life, and also patient survival is significantly compromised. So new treatment options are needed for patients with ESRD. And the, the solution that uh, we are working on is uh, stems from my experience as a uh, basic science researcher, a tissue engineer, and also a clinical nephrologist. And here we are attempting to combine stem cell technology, tissue engineering, and the established clinical practice of peritoneal analysis. In the approach that we're taking, we'll be using stem cells. Uh, these are cells that have the ability to be differentiated into multiple other types of cells. And in this case, we'll be differentiating them into what are called kidney organoids. Uh, kidney organoids are miniature kidneys, uh, which I've shown an example of one of the kidney organoids that we've made in our lab, uh, basically showing um, and highlighting the complex nature of the kidney organoids. They have three-dimensional structures. They have, in red, these are uh, small blood vessels, uh, and as well as the tubular structures that are found in the normal kidney. When people have looked at the kidney organoids and looked at the gene profiles, these kidney organoids very much match that of fetal kidney tissue. So we would like to take these kidney organoids and then implant them into small animal models uh, in the abdominal space to uh, model uh, combination of kidney organoids with peritoneal dialysis. Uh, the combination of peritoneal dialysis will allow us to be able to drain uh, any of the filtrate or the urine that's generated by the kidney organoids. The advantages of this approach are that kidney um, organoids derived from stem cells, the stem cells themselves can be derived from patients themselves. So. Uh, kidney organoids would not require, uh, theoretically, immunosuppression. Uh, furthermore, the kidney organoids contain the cellular complexity uh, that uh, has the potential to uh, have therapeutic value, uh, meaning that if the kidney organoids can generate filtrate, this could be um, uh, tremendously beneficial to the patient and improve uh, their overall health. And finally, the clinical practice of peritoneal dialysis is very well established. It's done uh, every day. Uh, and again, it's a home-based modality, and many patients uh, are um, uh, carried this out successfully. And so I appreciate the time uh, to talk about our project, and I look forward to reporting on our uh, progress in the future. Thank you.